Hi y'all, it's early on Saturday and I have a ton to do this weekend. Uh, it rained almost all week and I wasn't able to get outside except one day on Tuesday evening and I created a mess and I'll show that to you right quick. Uh, the accomplishments for this weekend are going to be one, preparing the front bed space and that expansion so I can plant all my perennials that are arriving in a couple weeks. Uh, that has got to get done. I was going to do a no dig bed there. Um, and the weather hasn't cooperated enough for me to get out there and do it. It had been too cold. It had been really warm in March and then it got cold again, so I hadn't been outside and then it rained a bunch. So I think I'm gonna take the tractor and try and just scrape the grass off. It's gonna be a complete mess, so I'm not gonna be shooting that, but I'm gonna try and get a bunch done today and come back and show you this evening or tomorrow. I'm also starting to get other plants to arrive. I got a shipment from Great Garden Plants yesterday. Uh, which I'm really excited about. There's a lot of tiny shrubs in there that are new to the market this year, and I'll show you those right quick. So Proven Winners has released a ton of different shrubs this year, and I've not seen them advertised a whole lot online yet, and typically that's because their availability can be kind of low. Uh, but Great Garden Plants works with Spring Meadow Nursery, so they're able to get a lot of the newer shrubs. And so you won't find some of these at your local garden center probably this year, but you could order them online. The wind today is also really bad as usual in our spring, so hopefully we have some good footage here, but I'm most excited about the Stay Classy Cherry. Look at that foliage. So you can look at all the details of these online, but this one specifically, because I'm excited about it, it gets roughly three to four foot tall and wide and hardy in zones two through eight. So really broad, broad range of hardiness and it just has really colorful foliage. And there's also a blackberry in here called Taste of Heaven that's supposed to be thornless, which is really nice. Uh, a new dogwood I'm really excited about called Sergeant Pepper, which has some variegated foliage. You can see that right there. And a lot of other little things that I've got that I had at the last garden, including this Celtic Pride um, Evergreen here. This is a cypress. Um, I planted it actually from Great Garden Plants because I've never been able to find it locally at the last garden. And I was going to bring it with me and you just, just kind of run out of time. So I got another one. This one looks really good. This new Illuminati Sparks Mock Orange, which has variegated yellow and green foliage. This is one of my favorites from my last garden that I planted from Great Garden Plants too. It's called Sun Joy Sequins Barberry. It has new foliage that is pink and uh, white. And there is a new holly in here called Castle Rouge and it has red new foliage. It is a blue holly. None of the foliage on it right now is red. And then a legend of the small bottle brush because I've not seen those locally and they are really, they smell really good and have really good fall color. What's this one? Oh, an Invincible Lace Hydrangea. I saw these at uh, Proven Winners uh, Color Choice Shrubs and in the Trial Gardens last year when I went. And they're actually really pretty. I didn't expect them to be as pretty in person as I thought they were. A GM called Tempo Rose. I love GMs. A fox glove called Arctic Rose. Arctic Fox Rose. And then some Calamint, which I had at the last garden in bulk that I've not been able to find so much locally. And I really love this perennial. So if you've been following me for a few years, you know a lot of my last garden was built off tiny shrubs that I got from great garden plants. Um, and when you receive them this size, you can either one, choose to pot them up and let the roots develop a little longer. If you have heavier clay soil, I might recommend that. That'll help them bulk up the roots easier in a container than they will in the soil. And then they'll grow better when you get them in the ground. Uh, here, I'm probably gonna be planting these directly in the ground. I've done that before um, and the soil here seems to be much better than it was at my last home. So I'm hoping they'll grow a little faster, but these type of things do take time. And I usually reserve these purchases to things that one are new and I know I'm not gonna find locally and two things that I don't really need a statement right now, but are very interesting and will grow on to become an interesting statement in the garden later. I'm also starting to hit the garden centers to um, gather things for plantings later, probably next month. Um, I have this little thing <laughs> where it's like this time of year I become panicked and I'm afraid everyone's going to go out and buy all the things and I won't be able to find what I want uh, and need and have planned to purchase for my projects. So I go out there early and I've told you for years I have this little area called the shrub bay. There's probably going to be one here. 
um, most likely that thing, I accumulate them during summer at the old house and I would plant them in the fall uh, as they went on discount in the season when they weren't watered good, sometimes at the local big box stores and I was just there and grabbed one up. But I've picked up a few things for projects that I'll be holding for the next month until I can get them in the ground and I'll show you those right now. So I got a couple boxwood these are called poodle tears, I guess. I typically like more of the lollipop where it's just one tier, uh, but they didn't have any this year that I could find. And so these will work fine for the project that I'm gonna be using them for. And then I picked up a uh, proudberry coralberry, which is one of my favorite shrubs. It has nice, this kind of bluish foliage. It doesn't so much now because it just emerged, but later in the season, it has more of a blue foliage. And then it produces these pink berries at the end of the season, which, are incredible in arrangements. This is the tag right here. Uh, so they last a really long time in arrangements. I haven't found that they last so much into winter fall here because we have such a wet winter, but they're really beautiful and they attract lots of pollinators. They can attract, and what I've mostly seen them attract is a specific variety of wasps, but I've never been bothered by those wasps. Just something to be aware of around here if you plant one. I've mostly seen them pollinated by wasps, but they are a beautiful addition to your garden and typically the coral barrier is called a snow berry and they produce white berries so this is an interesting take on that variety of shrub i've got a, a viburnum here called brandywine which produces pink and blue berries uh, if you've been following along you know i can be allergic to viburnum so i don't add a whole lot of them to my garden but some of them are that are really beautiful are worth adding to the garden. I'll just use long sleeves and stuff to protect myself when I trim on them. And I'm not like seriously allergic, but it does cause skin irritation on my arms if I'm trimming um, and messing with them so much. We have a ginger wine nine bark, which I have never grown before, but I'm excited to add to the mixed shrub border behind the fence. So some of these things, this is probably gonna go in the mixed shrub border behind the fence because it'll get pretty big. Ginger wine also gets pretty big. I have a castle, I think this one's castle wall. Let's see, no, this is castle spire. So this is the female. This evergreen is actually going to go here uh, in the middle of this flower bed after I get all of this grass removed. So that's gonna be a separate project that is probably gonna be pretty difficult to do because it's been severely overgrown for a number of years and it's grown all the way to the concrete barriers all the way around it. So I'm gonna plant the holly in the middle and underplant with some other things. I'm actually gonna shoot a water line, drip water line. I'm gonna dig down and shoot it under the grass here, under this little part of concrete. I'll take you along for that. I did it at the last house. You can buy actually a tiny um, nozzle that glues to PVC and allows you to kind of pressure with pressure, um, just your standard hose, shoot it under a concrete um, sidewalk and stuff. Of course, um, that can erode too much soil from your sidewalk and cause it to drop. I have not had that problem. I just wanna warn you to be careful if you proceed with that, that that's an option. So you don't wanna to erode too much soil to eliminate that support there. But just wanted to, tell you that that was an option out there and I'll tell you where I get that. I haven't bought it yet. Um, this is a castle wall spiral, sp um, blue holly. So this is the male version to the female that so this will produce berries. This is going to be planted in the mixed shrub border behind the fence over there closer because it needs to be close enough where they can both be pollinated. Uh, but I don't want it taking up any space around here because it doesn't produce any berries. The female version does and I think it will be pretty at Christmas or the holidays to have something that I could even decorate with lights down here at the barn be interesting and then I have a gold dust of Cuba which is not hardy in our zone uh, but they do return here pretty well so I guess it is technically hardy it's not rated as hardy to zone six it's typically rated to zone seven but the garden centers around here sell them and they're really a beautiful shade plant with all this yellow speckling. So the reason I go out this time of year and grab a bunch of things is particularly the topiaries can be hard to find later in the season. So I try and grab those specialty items that the garden centers may only have a handful of 
for the rest of the season or until they get a new shipment. So I don't want to lose out on those things for my projects. Um, and so I just hold them over. It's not really hot right now, so keeping them in containers isn't too bad. But by the next month, those things will hopefully be fully planted in the ground. We'll see. Now what I'm about to show you is totally one of those things where I'm just gonna say it's gonna look worse before it looks better. And with a lot of gardening projects, that's just how that happens. Um, there's no really good way to do this pretty and it's just gonna have to be done this way. So let me turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. So I came out here Tuesday and I just took buckets of dirt and scraped off. It's really hard to navigate. The, travel, the tractor is not particularly like skilled at closely getting nice to the fence and cleaning up, but I took the bucket and I need to come through and remove those shrubs. I'll probably do that today so I can come through and clean up a little better with the tractor. I'm gonna put them in containers for now, bigger containers that I have and keep them watered and plant them out when I have a space for them. But I came through and dug with the tractor some soil because I need to lower the soil level. I told you that it's too high against the fence and for maintenance reasons and keeping the fence in good shape, I need to dig out from under the fence. So I didn't want to dig out from under the fence and then have a bunch of soil on the edge uh, and then have issues with it just washing back down to the fence. So I come through and I took a bunch of soil out and I still probably can come through here and take some more. Uh, the reason for that was to remove some from the fence, but also if you remember, there is gooseneck loose strife in this area and you can actually still see some of it right here. That's what these little red roots are. So I come through and scraped as much of that off as I could. I gotta get it in a few more spaces, hoping that it will not come back. Uh, that's why some of these areas I got pretty low. So that's probably a good six inches or more of soil. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come through and uh, take my um, shovel and get out from under the fence. And then I'm gonna come through and take my tiller and till up the space nicely to even it out. Cause I can't finesse the ground good enough with the tractor in the space constraints that I have and the areas of approach that I can take to clean it up nice and smooth. So I got as close as I could, as I was comfortable with, without damaging anything, because you get in here with a tractor, um, it doesn't move great on when there's like any kind of like lumps and bumps. And so after you start moving some of that soil around, I didn't want it to slip and damage the fence. You may have noticed in some videos, this white section of fence, the previous owner did damage the, the fence with the tractor. And so we replaced it and I primed it this winter just so it didn't rust. I got to come back through and paint that black. So if you've noticed that and wondered why, that's why that is. And I just haven't gotten to it yet. So after I get cleaned out from under it, hopefully it'll be in this week sometime or the coming weeks um, that I can paint it. And I'm hoping to have this by, done by the end of May so I can plant my hydrangeas. Right now the priority today is to clean up that front bed and expand it for the perennials that are arriving because some of those will be bare root and they'll need to go directly in the ground. They can't sit around like some of the trays will. It's times like these that I'm really thankful that I have the tractor um, because that would have been a lot of manual digging to get some of that soil away. Sometimes it's just worth putting in the work now even if it takes a little longer and even if you uh, have other priorities that need to be taken care of. So I'm gonna put you away for the evening and I'll come back and show you um, what I got accomplished. I may record a little bit of video of what I'm doing today, but a lot of it's probably gonna be some tractor work and it's gonna take hours um, to nicely remove the grass and stuff from these spaces. So it'll be a long video to edit if I recorded all of it, but, but I'll check in with y'all soon. All right, y'all, I don't know if I'll be able to move tomorrow, but got a ton of stuff done. Uh, it's Sunday evening, worked till it started getting dark Saturday, so I didn't have time to come out and shoot a video, which is, tends to be what happens often. Um, I get up pretty early and get started while it's cool, take the hottest hours of the day during lunch when the sun's the worst off, and then come back out and do a lot of stuff. So I got the bed in the front 
um, completely mulch. Now I didn't have any mulch, uh, triple shredded hardwood mulch from that I usually put on my nice, the nice mulch on, that I usually put on the front garden bed. Um, I use wood chips. I did a thin layer. It kind of looks thicker than it is because it'll settle down when it gets rained on. But um, I was not able to take the tractor and scrape the grass off. You kind of have to have specific um, buckets and stuff to be able to take grass up. And my tractor's not quite powerful enough, so I ended up having to put down contractor's paper, which I've showed you before on this channel. And then I just covered it with a lightish layer of mulch. And one of the reasons I wanted to use wood chips instead of the good mulch is one, I hadn't ordered any and I was expecting to be able to kind of remove this with a tractor. And two, I'm going to come in here in a couple weeks and um, plant perennials in it and then they'll just be dirt all over it anyway. So I'll come through after I finish planting up this space uh, later in May, early June and completely cover it with nice brown age triple processed mulch like I usually do. But let's look how the edge turned out. So you can see here kind of what I went with. I made it a little wider than I made in the last video. So it starts about this uh, separation in the concrete here, goes around and reconnects over here. I need to clean up a little bit where it connects right there. And I'll do that when I bring in the regular mulch uh, as soon as I get things planted to make sure I don't want to finesse it a little more after all of my plants come in. But this, I am so thankful this got done because I was getting a little panicky with all the plants arriving just in a couple weeks. Now, typically you would let this sit for a month or more. Uh, when it's hot, it doesn't have to sit as long. The grass will break down quicker. Um, but you usually want it to sit a little longer before you start planting in it, else you'll just have some grass pop through. Um, I didn't have the luxury of time. Uh, it taken, the weather had been so weird and I hadn't got out here and done the project and then before I know it, it's the end of April and my plants were arriving. So I like the way it's turned out right now. What I'm probably going to do is put a path, I'll leave a gap of plants through here and I can put some stepping stones or some flagstone or something to kind of cut through this flower bed. I need to do that in several other spaces. I thought originally about having some more formal paths through the garden bed, but I don't know that I'll do that. I think I might just do some flagstone like I typically do so you can cut through the flower bed and don't have to walk completely around it because this flower bed is really big. I mean, I got I'm on the other side of the driveway now, and you can see this is the wide angle lens. You can see how much that takes up. I have not measured it, but from here to there, it's a pretty big distance. The roses that I had to dig up to plant this arbor um, are looking really good. So this one looks super healthy. Can't even really tell that it was dug up. I did throw some fertilizer in the hole. Um, I think it was just a uh, Job's rose fertilizer any fertilizer would have done fine but i just happened to buy some of that discounted last year in the fall uh, and i think they're going to do really good here this one looks a little rough i think it got a little dry on this exterior branch here and uh, but it'll be okay we'll see how much new growth it flushes out and if it still looks kind of ratty i'll just clip it off but there's lots of good new fresh growth down there i was waiting to tie this one up until it got a little longer uh, to the trellis and it's not quite long enough yet still so i'll give it a few more days of growth and then i'll tie it up i need to come through and touch up paint on it a little bit the artisan gave me some touch up black paint come through and wipe off some of this dirt but there's some spots on it that could just use a little uh, repainting so there's no rust or anything you can see i removed the uh, wood bracers after a couple days and it's really sturdy it's not going anywhere um, and you can see how far it is off from the wall about four inches exactly i planted a bunch of alliums a mixed variety of alliums behind these boxwoods and they're starting to get buds on them i really like i think i'm really going to like how these are going to look behind these taller more established boxwoods 
they're still not looking great this year. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, for those local, I did post uh, a post that boxwoods in several counties around us are getting the boxwood moth. Um, it's been spotted in our county and they kind of just decimate boxwoods. I don't think that's the issue with these. Uh, a lot of boxwoods around here are not doing good and they've not done good since the freeze we had. The freak freeze between Christmas and New Year's a couple years ago when the temperatures just dropped really severely really quickly after having a milder fall which burnt a lot of them up. I trim these pretty hard in the fall to make them less square. The previous owner had trimmed them into pretty much of a square. You can see they're still pretty square. Uh, I need to come through and probably trim them a little more, but they're putting on fresh growth. They need a dose of fertilizer, and then I think they might perk up, and I'm hoping that these dead spots fill in okay. Look at this crimson, well I'm not sure the variety, but it looks like a crimson queen Japanese maple just since I showed it from you the other day. Gorgeous. And I'm hoping it continues to look this way with all the water and support I'm going to be giving it throughout the summer. The crab apples are in full bloom right now and they're covered with bees. Not so much, well there's still a bunch of them this time of day. Uh, but earlier, you could just be under them and hear the bees buzzing. You can still hear them. Look at all those bees in there. Great pollinators for the early bees that are out, the mason bees, some honey bees I've seen already, and some bumblebees from here to there. I got the extra plants cleaned up from over here and moved behind the barn because I was able to get water back there yesterday. Uh, these are going to go on either side of the door after the door is painted. We had to prime it, caulk it, um, and we're going to have to wait for the caulk to dry because it had to be kind of a thicker bead because of the way the trim is on the siding. And then we will paint that to match the barn. And then I'm going to put the boxwoods right next to it. These are Crescent Garden containers. Love them. I've had them for years. And these boxwoods have been in these containers for about three years now and they're doing really good putting on lots of new growth and you may notice the rose wall the posts for the rose wall got painted so these were primed and painted tricorn black by sherwin williams which is the same color that i used on the shed at the last house and i'm probably not going to put a whole focus on creating the trellis across these yet uh, because the roses that i'm going to be planting will come in in a couple weeks we'll Plant those at the bottom of the poles, and then it'll take them a little bit to start growing. So uh, that can be put off for another month. And then I'm gonna put high hooks through on several, every couple feet up. And then I've got some black coated wire that I found on Amazon um, to string through those to create kind of a structure for these roses to grow on. Put all the plants back here behind the barn for now where I can get them watered. I need to put these on a timer um, to water them a couple times a day. Now that it's getting warm, it got almost to 80 degrees today, which is unusual for April. But I did get this um, backflow device and everything out and it's partially supported. I'll support it more when I get the irrigation fully installed, but I wanted to make sure that I got a hose bib out here so I could use it. I uh, got a post painted and ready to put my hose reels on, several of those throughout the garden. And after this gets fully installed, I'll probably support this pipe in two or three places just so there's no pressure on any of the joints. Now, the big project that I'm glad is mostly done, not completely, is behind me. And I think I left off the video yesterday morning when I started this video. Um, showing you how bad this looks and this is very much a take it as you will and if you're a new garter, gardener understand that oftentimes it looks worse before it looks better. It looked pretty bad in the video I shot yesterday morning. Uh, it is looking much better right now. There's still a long way to go and after I do the bed on the outside of the fence, that will help it look much better too. But let me turn the camera around and show you what I got done. All right, so I come through with the tractor yesterday evening and scooped up a bunch more soil. 
uh, kind of made a mess in some areas which will have to get cleaned up and I have not edged this bed obviously this is where the tractor kind of scooped up some dirt uh, which was easier back here because there wasn't grass it was just a bunch of weeds growing in the soil but then I came through today and I'm really tired from this evening worn out I took my little mantis tiller which I purchased in 2020 after the patio was installed to mend the soil around that patio uh, and tilled up the grass that was here or the extra soil where you can actually see the bottom of the fence now like I said I need to come through and dig on the other side to get the other side of the dirt but that's also going to be a flower bed in the future but right now this is ready for me to come later this week and put wood chips on it prepping it for all of the hydrangeas that are going to be planted here which I am so excited for that spot. So I'm not going to fully fill it with wood chips. I'm going to do it just to suppress more weed growth. Uh, and then I'm going to come through, plant the hydrangeas, and then try and establish an edge on this bed. You can see right here it's really deep because the concrete pieces kind of went through here that I pulled up uh, a few weeks ago. So this is probably about how deep the bed is going to be right there. It'll be probably pretty deep. Um, and I'll carry that same distance all the way around the side here. So I'll have to reestablish and reseed some grass in some areas. Establishing an edge on this is probably going to be pretty difficult because it's so wonky from pr the previous uh, flower bed that was in here. You can see some are pretty shallow. And then we have some really deep spots. So this is not going to be perfect real quick, but this allows me to start planting things in it and get them in the ground before it gets too hot so they'll be much happier. So maybe I can start planting this hydrangea hedge um, in the next couple weeks, hopefully before the end of May. I'll have it in and then I can finish doing the bed space and edging later in May or when able, I'm get, able to get to it. And not to be like a salesperson for Mantis, which is the tiller brand that I've had for a few years. I've not used that tiller, uh, but the one time I needed it around the fence, I bought it specifically to amend the soil there because I, I think I mentioned on my channel in a couple videos, the soil around the fence or the patio at the other house, sorry, um, was so compacted that the plants that I planted in the ground in the spring of 2020 were dying. The holes were holding water. Uh, it was so compacted. And so I had to completely uh, remove all of the plants in that bed in June, nonetheless. Um, and then I had to till in mushroom compost. I put in some perlite. Um, what else did I put in there? Oh, some alfalfa from Tractor Supply just to get any organic matter into that flower bed. And that mantis tiller did an incredible job. And it busted up all of this uh, extra soil I had here really nice and made it really fluffy. The goal there wasn't to dig down any, it was to grade. So I wanted to get those clumps of soil that I couldn't get from the tractor pulled back into the bed after I had removed all that soil. So more of a regrading when I dig the holes for the hydrangeas, they'll still need to be several inches deep uh, dug with my power planter probably. But after this weekend, I'm at a much better place than I was when the weekend started. Fixing issues like this just takes time. Like I mentioned, I think this entire area was regraded when the pool was installed, which was around probably like 2004, I think is what we can find. So they push soil against the fence is what it looks like. And then this has been 20 years of bad maintenance basically that had to be remedied. So it's taken me weeks and weeks to do and hours and hours, but I know it'll be worth it for future headaches um, when we go to paint the fence, um, clean the fence off and that type thing. So it doesn't seem like too much, but that was two full days of work. A lot of relief off of me, although I may not be able to move tomorrow. Um, and knowing that all of these plants that are arriving next week will have a home where I can put them in the ground. We'll end this video right in front of the beautiful red bud that's blooming. Um, 
and I'll catch you guys in the next video soon. My dahlias arrived yesterday, so I'll be planting them, and that may be the next video. Thanks for joining me for this evening garden walk. Remember, be a light. Take care.